Game to show adaptations are often some of the worst pieces of media to hit our screens, yet the Last of Us series has amazingly trumped this stereotype. Hi, I'm Angel Chu, and today we're going to be talking about some of the most interesting differences between the Last of Us show and game. Just a warning, if you haven't watched The Last of Us show or played part one of the game, there are going to be some minor spoilers within this video, so you have been warned. Even after taking particular care to make sure that I haven't made any mistakes, I'm bound to have made one or two, so feel free to correct me in the comments below. I've also done some pretty extensive research to make sure that I haven't made any mistakes, so feel free to check out my paste bin linked in the description for any of the resources I've used in this video if you're interested in some extra reading. I would like to give a warning before this section of the video as I do very lightly touch on some troubling topics like suicide. Please skip to the timestamp on the screen now if you're not comfortable hearing about it. Bill was a pivotal character within both the game and the show, but there are a number of major differences between the two depictions of him as a character and his story. Game Bill still holds the same angry but lovable middle-aged man persona as presented in the show, but in my opinion, slightly less lovable in the game. The major difference between Game Bill and Show Bill is unlike what is established in the show, he isn't dead. Both Ellie and Joel meet Bill, with Joel having an already established relationship with Bill, when they reach Lincoln while in search of a truck to make their journey faster, similarly to in the show. Frank, on the other hand, within the game, is in fact dead. All we see of Frank is his decomposing body hanging from the ceiling of an abandoned house. In regards to Bill and Frank's romantic relationship, the game implies a close relationship between the two, but not as directly as the relationship depicted within the show. I have nothing to do with- Jesus. What, you know this guy or something? Frank. Who the hell's Frank? He was my partner. He's the only idiot that would wear a shirt like that. It is extremely likely that within the game universe they were intended to be in a relationship as The Last of Us is no stranger to its portrayal of LGBTQ plus characters, plus in my heart they're together in every universe. Within the game, Sam is presented very differently than in the show. Although his game death plays out relatively the same way as was depicted in the show, there are a couple of key differences between the two depictions. To start, in the show, rather than being 13 like in the game, he is 8, slightly changing his relationship dynamic between him and Ellie, although not dramatically. The second major difference is Sam's character within the show is death, being portrayed by deaf actor Kevin Woodard. Fun fact about Kayvon, by the way, he also plays hockey and aspires to be the NHL's first deaf player. This portrayal of Sam as a deaf character is extremely important as I believe it was a great choice by the showrunners to incorporate some deaf representation into cinema as it is crucial for several reasons. It promotes inclusivity and diversity by giving a platform to an underrepresented community, fostering understanding and breaking down stereotypes. It allows deaf individuals to see themselves reflected on the screen providing a sense of empowerment and validation. It helps raise awareness about deaf culture, language, and challenges faced by the deaf community, promoting empathy and social change. Ultimately, deaf representation in cinema enriches storytelling, enhances artistic expression, and contributes to a more inclusive, equitable society. There are a number of things I could talk about in relation to Ellie, but I would like to touch on one thing and one thing only. Ellie can in fact not swim. Hey, uh, I can't swim. This in the game is a major part of gameplay, having to drag her on planks of wood around bodies of water like she's rose from the Titanic on a door. This isn't mentioned once in the entire show, at least not that I remember, correct me if I'm wrong. And it makes me so mad for literally no reason. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who cares though, as I don't really know where Ellie not being able to swim would have fit into the show's plotline.
In the world of The Last of Us, more specifically the game series, spores refer to a crucial element of the game's post-apocalyptic setting. The game is set in a world ravaged by a fungal infection called cordyceps, which primarily affects humans and other mammals. Cordyceps is a real type of fungus that mainly infects insects and other anthropods, but in the game it has mutated to affect humans. Spores in The Last of Us are the reproductive structures of cordycep fungus. They are released by infected hosts as a means of spreading the infection to new victims. The spores are airborne and can be found in areas heavily populated by infected individuals. When humans inhale the spores, they become infected themselves. The spores in the game are often found in dark, damp environments such as abandoned buildings or underground areas. They create a distinctive atmosphere with floating particles visible in the air. Coming into contact with spores is dangerous and can lead to infection unless the character in the game is wearing a protective mask. Encountering areas of spores usually indicates the presence of an infected creature nearby. The players must navigate carefully to avoid confrontation or to engage in combat. The spores add to the game's tension and contribute to the overall sense of danger and vulnerability in the post-apocalyptic world. This aspect of the apocalypse is virtually not depicted in the show at all, and it was like my favourite part of the game. I don't know why it was my favourite part of the game, I guess I just kind of thought it was cool in a weird, gross way. The Last of Us television series oddly states that Joel had lost touch with Tommy quite some time ago despite the fact the two had previously spoken frequently. Yet the game hints that they had little to no contact at all. I'm not sure why the show suggests Tommy is missing, but it's most likely for plot convenience, although I'm not sure what it's conveniencing. Bloaters are a very powerful and physically intimidating type of infected that is covered in thick fungus that serves as armoured plates. As a result, their skin develops into vast areas of luminescent scale-like tissue that covers their entire body and forms their mycotoxic my, 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 bat pouches. They are incredibly difficult to kill because of their protective covering, which allows them to withstand repeated impacts from weapons like shotguns and a hunting rifle, as well as hatchets and matches. Some bloaters, like the one that Joel and Ellie encounter in the Wyoming Hotel, are likewise impossible to kill outside of cutscenes. Within the show, their first encounter with the bloater is in episode 5 when it emerges from a pit whilst they are trying to escape Kathleen and Perry. This is very clearly done to create a shock moment rather than the bloater appearing multiple times like it does in the game. To conclude, there are a number of differences between the show and the game that make them both unique and interesting in their own right. Plus, personally, in my opinion, they're both great and I love them. But that's all for now. I hope you have a wonderful morning, midday, afternoon or night, and thanks for watching.